Farming communities have long worried about the effect of coal mining and coal seam gas development on underground water. A new independent study has looked at a drop in water levels in the Thirlmere Lakes National Park in New South Wales. According to some geologists, the study raises questions for the development of coal and gas fields near surface water. Craig Muskelly reports. On the fringe of Australia's biggest city, in a sandstone gorge millions of years old, lies one of Sydney's natural treasures. The vegetation is lush in this internationally recognised national park. But over the last few years, the five unique lakes here seem to have been drying out. That's your one. My one, it goes up a tree, and this is the one that goes in the water. Today, Philip Pells and his son Stephen Pells, both scientists, are here monitoring rainfall capture in one of the lakes. What intrigued me initially was uh, the statement that this was a very unique area. It is part of World Heritage, and I knew nothing about it two years ago, so that initially hooked me. Dr Philip Pells, a groundwater engineer, was determined to discover what was happening to the Thelmere Lakes. Yes, this is the Lake Narragarang Recreational Lake. And we he began gathering data like old photos, rainwater records and historical documents. At first he suspected the recent lengthy drought was to blame. The lakes had been dry in World War II and the famous Federation drought in the 1900s. But then he talked to locals. Farmers, a number of them are saying that they've lost the water from their bores or a substantial proportion of their water in their bores. Nearby, market gardener Erhan Akinja says there's a heavy drop in the groundwater he's licensed to pump. I don't use much water at the moment, but for me to lose that water, it stops me to become a big grower or, you know, stops me to uh, plant more because I know I don't have the water there. Late last year, following community concerns about disappearing water, the New South Wales Government announced an expert inquiry into the Thirlmere Lakes. The upper four inches, which is white man time, and then I'm into Aboriginal time. Philip Pells has now modelled the water levels in the system of five lakes, and it's his new hypothesis that up to two metres of water has just vanished. Now he wants to test his conclusion. There's water that should be there that isn't there. The only reasonable postulation that fits in with physics analysis is the impact of the colliery which is about a kilometre behind me. It doesn't come beneath the lakes, there's been no cracking of the rocks beneath the lakes, but there's been depressurisation of the deep groundwater at a depth of 300 metres below us here, back to 1976. The nearby Tarmore colliery employs around 400 people to extract around 3 million tonnes of raw coal each year. The miners work the Bulleye Seam a 900 square kilometre bed rich in steel making coal. The seam is a premium resource. It's mined across southern Sydney and down the Illawarra coastline. It generates billions in export dollars for the New South Wales economy. Extrata, who just recently purchased the mine, told 7.30 that their longwall mine complies with all government guidelines. And they say the current operations are located well beyond the lakes. In a statement to 7.30 they say, we have offered our assistance to the Thelmy Lakes Inquiry and will be making a submission in the coming weeks. 7.30 has confirmed that Inquiry members have received Dr Pell's self-funded report. Pell's team has mapped flows of water into the shallow aquifers feeding the lakes, the ancient salty aquifers and along the massive coal seam far below. In between, a thin layer of clayey rock, known as Bald Hill Claystone, separates the two water systems. This claystone is commonly expected to act like a waterproof plastic sheet. But Dr Pell's theory is that mining activity may have depressurised the deep aquifers, allowing the water table to seep through the Bald Hill claystone. Over the years, the fresh water once caught in the lake system has dropped away, and Dr Pell's thinks it may now flow towards the deep mining affected saline layers. The claystone is not watertight. It is of lower permeability than the sandstone I'm sitting on, but it is certainly not a plastic sheet. So Anne, this is the Bald Hill Claystone that you geologists are so concerned about, isn't it? The current accepted idea is that the Bald Hill Claystone is an impermeable barrier that stops water coming from the Hawkesbury Sandstone through down into those deeper aquifers. And what Philip Pell's report on Thelmere Lakes has shown is that that is not necessarily the case. 
Anne Young is a globally recognised expert on Sydney's sandstone formations and she says Pearl's claystone argument is convincing. Water can move through and under natural conditions it will do so slowly. For her, Pearl's views raise new questions for both coal and gas industries across the Bull Eye Seam. The geologist already has long-standing concerns about impacts like excessive drilling through layers and the surface extraction of underground water from deep salty aquifers. But now she also wonders about the possible connection of aquifers above and below the claystone. The big unknown is the impact on those deep aquifers. Now none of those deep aquifers are useful as drinking water or irrigation water. But we don't know whether alteration at depth can affect the aquifers that we are concerned about near the surface. It is possible that we can interconnect aquifers that are not currently connected. 50 kilometres from the lakes in Thoreau, on the other edge of Sydney, a coastal community is talking about whether a new CSG project is a threat to their water catchment. And if you'll allow me to add one word, talk. They're spearheading local protest against coal seam gas exploration in their end of the massive bull eye seam. For over a century, the Illawarra community has balanced underground coal mining with sensitive swamps and streams on their seaside escarpment. In terms of our community, one of the biggest concerns is drinking water. Organiser Jess Moore argues the biggest fear is the loss of pristine water inside nearby protected water catchments. These areas provide a buffer zone to actually ensure the drinking water of. It's actually 4.3 million people. So our catchment areas actually feed through to water storage areas that are accessed by Sydney, the Southern Highlands, the Illawarra, so two-thirds of the population of New South Wales. Apex Energy, the company drilling exploration wells in the area, says its exploration project safely taps existing coal mines and has been thoroughly reviewed by government authorities. In a detailed statement to 7.30, they say any future production is subject to strict conditions to ensure negligible additional effect on the depressurisation of groundwater aquifers. The bulk of its exploration is inside the borders of Sydney's metropolitan catchments, which feed major dams. It's a sensitive environment, supplying fresh, clean water to southern Sydney. The protest group cite more than 20,000 signatures on a petition demanding political action. One of the things we have always campaigned for is a Royal Commission. So we have said, if you can prove it's safe, then we're willing to... The community needs to be able to decide whether or not that goes ahead. Jess Moore also wants answers into cumulative impacts of further CSG development, particularly in undeveloped Illawarra coal beds. The coal goes underneath this big sandstone plateau. Anne Young would welcome more science. She says a good solution is for government to map groundwater flows and predict impacts throughout the southern coal fields. I think we have to understand a great deal more about the deep aquifers. We need better monitoring of them, we need better modelling of them. We need to be surer of what's happening. And this is not something that you do over a couple of months. This is a two-year, five-year, ten-year monitoring, modelling process that we need to be engaged in as a matter of urgency. While the State Government inquiry will eventually report in June, the experts fear that for Thelmere Lakes it may be too little too late. In their view, the vanishing lakes are a reminder about the impacts of mining techniques on aquifers. The challenges that this research could throw down to CSG is that some or many CSG projects should actually not go ahead. Why? Because the long-term impact on surface water and groundwater systems are unacceptable for other uses of our country and our land. And for more information on that story, go to our website, Greg Muskelly, with that report.